Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode of your favorite low energy internet asshole. Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, as I grow older, I've realized that I want to die in a super mysterious way. That way, a Netflix documentary comes out about my violent, unsolved murder 10 years later. So I figured what better way to start off along that path in life than exploring a bunch of abandoned buildings in the middle of nowhere. Route 66 is a trip that Caleb and I have been planning for a very, very long time. And we finally had a minute or two off work, so we said, it and hit the road. The plan was to fly out to Kansas and then road trip all the way back to LA via Route 66. Did we stick to Route 66 the whole time? Well, just like the toilet bowl when we take a leak, there were a few deviations. Naturally, on any road trip, the hardest decision is deciding which cameras to bring. Since I'm dumber than a hot pocket, I consulted the Oracle. After an initial offering of treats and gullet rubs, a vision came to me and the message was clear. The Leica M6 and the Daddy Mamiya 7. The perfect duo, like bees and honey, like peanut butter and jelly, like orthofilm and red filters. I also brought a Yashica T4, more on that in a future video. For this trip I shot none other than black and white and color negative film. Sorry to all you adrenaline junkies out there that wanted to see slide film. No, actually that's a lie. I shot two rolls of retrochrome. I couldn't resist. That film stock just gets me moister than an oyster. Anyway, speaking of retrochrome, I realized that my early morning flight would be lifting off just as the sunrise was happening. So I preloaded the Yashica T4 with some of that good sh So to begin the journey, I caught an Uber down to LAX. The ride was pretty good, four out of five stars. One star deducted because the driver tried to kiss me at the end for some reason. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. After landing in Kansas, Caleb, who was already there, picked up my stranded ass and we wrangled up some Kansas barbecue as a blessing for our journey ahead. Later on, we picked up our rental car for the trip, a Mercedes S-Class. Anyway, the trip got started off right, shooting some sweet golden hour light around some small towns with Caleb and his brother. In the Mamiya, I loaded up some XP2 and was shooting through a yellow filter stacked with a one quarter pro mist. As Tyga once said about lens filters, it's stack city, bitch. This shot is the shit. I love it. Retrochrome is amazing. I understand that it's not for everyone, but sometimes everyone around you is wrong. I think the colors are just so perfectly weird and expired that it works. You may have also noticed that there's a lot of scratches and just general light leak bullshittery in these shots. I'll get into why in a little bit. Thank you. 
Okay, let's talk about love. I mean, film, same thing. I didn't know how much film to bring, so I pretty much brought all of it. Over 70 rolls of film equating to something over a thousand shots, which you might think is extreme, but I'm a man of extremes. If I'm not in my garden resting and sipping tea with one pinky out, I'm butt chugging Mike's hard lemonade in the back of a cab heading home from the club at 6 a.m. But enough about last weekend. The last time I road tripped with Caleb, I shot somewhere around 246 photos in three days. So who knows what nine days is gonna do to me and my bank account. Well, I know because I'm recording this after the trip, but for you, it's a mystery. The next day we loaded up our vehicle and hit the road with a smile on our face and a song in our hearts, which would soon be crushed. Our first stop would be this abandoned high school in rural Kansas and boy oh boy do I wish we did not stop there. Not because the pictures sucked, I actually think that the images, not this one, turned out awesome. But because we found out that this abandoned high school was not actually abandoned anymore. And no, I'm not talking about ghosts. We found this out the hard way when Caleb tried to open a door. I think someone lives here. And it mysteriously slammed shut. Being the true cowards that we are, we booked it back to the horseless carriage and hightailed it out of there. We talked to some town folk later and they explained that the people living there were, let's say, hostile towards everyone. Small towns are weird places. They explained that the town has been trying to evict them for a while and apparently we were the only people ballsy enough to have a peek inside for a very long time. But that's because we didn't know. And yeah, this is what it looked like mostly. We almost got our heads blown off shotgun style, but at least the photos look cool, especially this gymnasium interior. Throughout this small town, we also noticed that there are a few other interesting buildings that we also shot, though we were considerably more distant. It was also time to bust out the golden boy, the Leica M6. While cruising through Kansas, I got pulled over for driving while sexy. Just kidding, they won't pull you over for that, at least not in my experience. Apparently the left lane of a two lane highway is for passing only, good to know. After calling the cop handsome, we got let off with a verbal warning and went on our way. Anyway, the trip was off to a rocky start, but we were determined not to die. Luckily, I think the universe finally decided it was time to throw us a W, and that it did when we passed by this abandoned building and shot the ever-loving crap out of it. No shotguns, no onlookers, no police, just pure and simple Leica M6 and Mamiya 7 shutter slaps. Everything was calm and perfect, though it appears we had just missed the party. What do you think this was? I, it's probably a gas station of some sort. Or a shop. repair shop.
Down the road was a real treasure. If by treasure I mean a house that would go for 500 grand in LA as a slight fixer-upper. I took the opportunity to wrap up the Portra 400 in my M6 and the Retrochrome in my Yashica T4. So you might be wondering about these light leaks. Since Retrochrome is a re-spooled film, the Yashica T4 just straight up yeeted the film off of the roll as it was trying to advance to the next frame. So that would be fun to deal with later. We arrived in yet another small town and shot these fields of yellow flowers and ramshackled abodes. I took this portrait on Ektar 100 of Caleb looking like he wants to f my Leica M6. What happened? Oh, uh, kept the exposure at 400. Forgot to change his uh, light meter. You hate to see it happen. Titanium, you can be a little rough with it. <laughs> Cross paths with another abandoned school, but this time we stayed a safe distance away. Which is fine because I promised Monica that I wouldn't die on this road trip and leave her a single mom with our son Baxter, who is very needy.
my gosh. After finally being accepted as one of the locals, we cruised on to Oklahoma, which is about as close to Arkansas as I ever want to get. I've said it before, and I'll say it again until the day that I die from that aforementioned violent, unsolvable murder. I think when you go out on road trips and do shoots like this, you have to kind of warm up a little bit. I don't think that these photos are anything to slap the wall about, but I was getting into the groove. Mm, yep. I probably should have just shot these on black and white, too. Anyway, as the day was winding down, we cruised through a bunch of random small towns, and we finally picked one and stopped. The streets were completely empty, but not as empty as my bank account because of all that film. We just ordered $37 worth of Sonic because we have not eaten all day since breakfast. We are going to hate ourselves. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I'm scared where that was going. I was cool. I wouldn't even. Here go for a lighting. At the hotel, we broke into our Costco whiskey supply that we brought along so that we could erase all of our memories from earlier that day. But before I got totally blasted and started running around the parking lot naked singing Proud to be an American, I needed to deal with the Yashica T4 situation. The retrochrome was still jammed in the camera. So in the hotel bathroom, I turned all the lights off and huddled over the toilet, but not for my usual reasons. The film wouldn't go back into the cartridge, so I just used Caleb's knife to cut it out of the camera, because drinking and knives are such a good combination. I threw the film into an empty black canister. The light leaks, I'm assuming, are a result of me not making the bathroom a perfectly light tight room. There's a sphincter joke in there somewhere. So the moral of the story is maybe just don't use re-spooled film in a Yashica T4. And if you already knew that and are laughing your ass off at how dumb I am, then good for you. You now share a commonality with most of my teachers. The next morning, it was time to see what's cracking in Oklahoma. Caleb was enjoying his hotel cinnamon roll a bit too much. All right, so it was our first day in Oklahoma. Um, we just woke up, got breakfast. Today we're actually gonna- Oh, his cinnamon roll is so good. Oh, f the cinnamon rolls. Mm -hmm. Dude, 
I'm recording. We got to Chelsea, Oklahoma, and the vibe was just right there. Maybe because they were able to grasp the simple truth that Coke is better than Pepsi, and they decorated their town square to reflect that. I threw some Portra 400 in my Leica M6, and I also threw up in my mouth, because I should have shot black and white. That wasn't too bad. This is the most Edward Hopper photo I think I've ever taken. And you know what? I can't explain why. It's just a vibe. We finally made our religious pilgrimage to the Blue Whale of Catoosa, which to us was somewhat of a holy site. All right, here at the Blue Whale, this is where, uh, if I recall, Kyle McDougall shot like a whole video here. Oh, I feel Kyle inside me. All right, well, I can't use that. I banged out some 6x7 Portra 400 in the Mamiya 7 before I switched over to the Leica M6 again. really a big fan of these photos and I can tell you why. The lighting was ass. That combined with my subpar compositional eye made the photos look kind of stale. Black and white probably would have been better but imagine passing up the opportunity to shoot this big blue bitch in color. Eventually we arrived in Tulsa and I loaded up the Yashica T4 with the PTSD of my last roll getting ripped still very fresh in my mind. Oh, this thing still works after I f***ed with it last night. So that's what that noise was. Yeah, I wasn't taking a s***. So I wanted to talk for a minute about lenses. I recently swapped out my Mamiya 7's 80 millimeter lens for the 65 millimeter, which is about four millimeters short of perfection. All in all, these Mamiya 7 lenses are the sharpest I've ever used. They're damn near perfect. And that's why a lot of times I use a one quarter pro mist on a lot of my black and white work to muddy and flare up the image a little bit.
You okay, bro? I need caffeine. <laughs> With these four shots, I cranked the aperture wide open to f4 to see what kind of out of focus fall off I'd get. And it's not bad, though I don't think anyone's purchasing the Mamory 7 to shoot portraits. We pushed on to the town center, and it was as dead as a doorknob. Which was kind of great because no one was staring us down while we took photos. As we were cruising down Ol' 66, as we'd soon start calling it, we saw a house that, frankly, has seen better days. And we shot it as quickly as we could before someone came along and told us hooligans to scram. Of course, you know your boy couldn't pass up an opportunity to shoot a picture of a toilet. Honestly, I have so many toilet photos now, should I do a toilet zine? We hit up Pops, which is kind of a staple of Route 66. Basically, they sell weird sodas, so we made it our mission to get the nastiest ones. We even asked some of the kids that were there which ones were the grossest, and they just told us we were freaks. In half a mile, turn right onto Southeast K. Gaylord Boulevard. <laughs> As we cruised through Oklahoma City, we actually got a tip from internet personality Ryan Graff about a cool neon light sex dungeon. And anything neon, we're there. How do you like that, that framing? Colors, you know. Yeah. It's 
These are some of the best photos from the trip, in my opinion. I mean, holy shit, what a cool installation. Downtown Oklahoma City was kind of a strange place. It felt like a ghost town. There was practically no one on the streets amongst all these high rises. If you live in Oklahoma City, feel free to try and explain that. As the sun started to go down, we hauled ass west to one last location. Okay, I'll do Cherry Coke Zero. At a hotel somewhere on the border of Oklahoma and Texas, we broke into the nasty weird sodas and decided to see how well they pair with whiskey. Leninade. It says get hammered and sickled. Cheers. Cheers. Tastes like sugar. Dude, it doesn't taste like anything. Um, are we gonna rate these from one to five? One to 10,000. Worm ooze. Dude, Warm there's in the bottom of this. It's literally like a dehydrated piss color. You know what would be really funny? Is if we had whiskey in between. You just want to drink whiskey. <laughs> I like it better than lemonade. All right, palate cleanser. Palate cleanser. Should we put some, some wormoos in it? Do you want to? No. Oh, what do you mean, no? It's going to be disgusting. All right, fine. <clears throat> that makes oh, it so much good. worse. So this is called... Green apple soda. This looks like Hulk piss. This tastes like a Jolly Rancher. All right, so this is a, uh, yeah, Georgia peach flavored Coca-Cola. Do you think this will be the highest rated one? Glam perfume. Oh, that's really good. Uh, what does that taste like? Like movie theater Slurpees. I wouldn't ever want to drink it again. Huh. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to say that. In, in Cola, Inglesa. What do you think this is gonna taste like? Blood. All right, cheers. Cheers. Ooh, bubblegum, yeah. Unicorn, yak. I feel like this could actually be good. No, I don't think this is gonna be good. Not too fast. Interesting. <clears throat> it's kind of like cotton candy with like... <gasps> and nothing beats coffee. Gatorade. Is pop your thing? Do you like, do you like trying different pops? No. Who the f calls them pops? What the f name? Look at the uh, f side well, of this, this is thing. A... Well, it's a, also Soda. Pop, pop is a Midwestern thing. Do you call sandwiches hoagies? No, that's stupid. Calling soda pop is <laughs> stupid too. I have the weirdest taste in my mouth right now. No one's gonna watch this. This video's already gonna be like an hour long and it's like half of it's gonna be us bullshitting about us. <laughs> the next day we mistakenly woke up for sunrise. Mistakenly because the cloud cover made the sunrise non-existent. Being naive and all too hopeful, I put in some Portra 400. You know how they say you have to make mistakes to learn? Well, I made plenty of mistakes shooting these scenes in color, and I didn't learn a damn thing.
when I finally switched over to black and white, everything was right in the universe. Lo-fi beats to pump gas to. At this abandoned gas station, I don't think I took a single good photo. I know it might sound like I'm being hard on myself, but worry not. Public shaming is the only way I'll get better. Also, someone literally blew up the toilet. Back at the hotel, I finally assembled my tripod that I had smuggled onto the plane. But I didn't smuggle it in my luggage, if you catch my drift. I'd like to take a moment and talk about our lord and savior, T-Max. Literally the finest grained 100 and 400 speed black and white films on the market. T-Max is just gangster. The shadows fall off into the darks very quickly and it just creates this mood in your images that's unbeatable. I only shot T-Max 400 on this trip but I imagine 100 is just as dank. Our next stop was America's version of the Leaning Tower, which, depending on your glancing angle, is leaning to the left, which makes two things. Driving and shooting through Texas, I realized that I really enjoy these photos. Something about the light, the clouds, and the flatness just creates this really nice atmosphere. That, and apparently Texas, f***s with grain just as much as I do. This hotel was recently abandoned as far as we could tell. I finished up my roll of Portra 400 in the Yashica T4 here.
I figured now was as good a time as any to load up some retrochrome. Having learned my lesson the hard way, I figured I'd use a camera that doesn't have auto advance. At the Cadillac Ranch, we left our mark. I voted that we draw that S dollar sign thing that seems to be burned into our collective consciousness, but Caleb vetoed it, instead choosing to draw a nude self-portrait. We stopped at another grain silo or a nuclear missile silo or whatever. I don't know what these things are. This shot is near perfection for me, except for two things. My confident but dumbass forgot to change the meter from 100 to 400 ISO for the T-Max 400. So every one of these photos is overexposed by two stops. But you know what? T-Max came through and held it down. Additionally, in hindsight, I kind of wish I'd backed up a little bit more for this shot. I knew that I wanted Caleb and the full scope of the silo in the shot so that I could show scale really easily. I think I just saw the opportunity in the moment and took the shot. Down the road, we stumbled upon one of my favorite locations that I've ever shot at, an abandoned shell gas station. I had to pimp my retrochrome all over it. I also shot some Portra 400 in the Mamiya 7. Later on, we cruised up to some more abandoned gas stations, though they were a little more covered in graffiti. Nonetheless, I finally took my own advice and shot some T-Max 400 in the Leica M6. T-Max! And you know what? I actually really like these shots.
later on, down the Route 66 highway, we stumbled upon a completely abandoned motel, which is a gem for photographers, but not so much for weary travelers, which we were both. Honestly, don't remember taking a shot but it's pretty cool why is it that the shots that we don't think twice about sometimes turn out to be heat each hotel room kind of had a cute theme for example, one room would be destroyed, and the next room would be super destroyed. It was really cool from a photography perspective. We continued onward to perhaps the most rugged part of the original Route 66. I didn't shoot anything here, I was a little more interested in getting back to civilization before we started hearing banjos. In 1.4 miles, turn right onto Quay County Road K. Shooting with the Leica. We finally arrived in New Mexico and checked into our hotel for the night. And we also checked out of all of our responsibilities because we started drinking as soon as we got in the room. Anyway, the perfect mixer for beer is pizza, so naturally we grab some slices. Yo, um, we just went out for pizza and uh, milkshakes, and um, now we're back in the hotel room. We're in Tucumcari, New Mexico, and um, we're gonna go out and shoot some abandoned buildings later. Dude, I'm trying to record. So this was an interesting spot. My instinct at sunset is to shoot color, but today I went against my own programming. Not only was the light balls out gorgeous, but I somehow had the instinct to shoot it in black and white. With the yellow filter and the pro mist, these shots really shined.
Two minutes later, we stopped at this building that was quite colorful. I slammed some Ektar 100 in the Mamiya 7, released that helpful but annoying film curtain. Mamiya 7 users, you know what I'm talking about, and got to shooting. like this is that like the silhouette of this town of Tukumari is actually really cool that far. 14, 15, 6, 16, 35 millimeter rolls. One, two, three, it was time to head out and do some night photography, so we got prepared by shoving some Cinestill 800T where the sun don't shine. That's right, in our light type Mamiya 7s. What is wrong with me? <laughs> I threw up in my mouth again. <laughs> Actually, these first few shots are some Portra 400 that I needed to wrap up. I'm not sure what compelled me to take a photo of Napa Auto Parts, but here it is anyway. So you might look at this photo and think, whoa, sick, you captured a lightning bolt on film. But sadly, you're wrong, you dumb, naive fool. It's actually static discharge, and apparently it's pretty common with Cinestill. Back at the hotel, we winded down by watching some Kyle McDaddy videos. Kyle, if you're watching this video, I'm sorry. The next morning, it was time to f up some T-Max. We stopped at several locations that were a little bit past their prime. Unfortunately, the cloud cover wasn't on our side. in your head. Nothing but T-Max 400. A lot of these shots turned out great, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't want a higher quality lens for some of these. Maybe it's time to invest in some Leica glass. Down the road of life, and literally down the road, we found a hotel that had been completely gutted. I decided to change things up and shoot some Cat Labs 80, which was an interesting move because we would soon venture inside where there was significantly less light.
Should we go up those stairs? Oh, hell no. Oh, man, this might be one of the most janky places we've been in. We moved on to a different abandoned part of the property, which was ironically named Paradise Hotel and Cafe. It seemed like a popular dumping ground for the locals, as evident by the fridge that had been there since probably the day before. So naturally, I joined in on the fun and dumped some T-Max 400 in my Leica M6. No filters, just raw T-Max doing what it does best, baby. While I'm growing to be less and less of a fan of the Jupiter 35mm lens, I have to say its ability to flare up in very contrasty situations without being overpowering is pretty neat. Between this lens and vodka, the Russians really nailed it. Two seconds down the road was another gem, an abandoned gas station. I actually thought that this was one of the best locations that we had visited so far because it wasn't totally blasted with graffiti. This is just the type of location that I just felt like I had to shoot in 6x7. That being said, I don't really think that my photos did it justice. If you're wondering where you heard that before, it's probably from any point earlier in this video. At places long abandoned like this gas station, I sometimes wonder about who the last person was to fill up their tank, and if they were even aware that they would be the last person. Have you been over here yet? Mm -hmm. I came through that back section. Pretty cool. Yeah, it is.
one point, Caleb dared me to climb a sketchy pool ladder. I dare you to climb it. Possibly hoping I would fall to my death from three feet up, but because I'm not a coward, I accepted. Wow. How many shots did you take? Uh, maybe like five or six. I shot it with a yellow filter, so all the blue should be uh, kind of muted. Or the wrong choice. Later on, we visited this Wilkerson's, which is kind of like a CVS, if CVS had been bombed out by a German blitzkrieg in World War II. This guy started to piss on us more and more. We continued to shoot photos. Though our time was a bit limited at this defunct post office, I actually think I took some cool photos here. Yet another example of a scene that would be better shot on black and white. Anyway, Caleb and I were heading into a storm. Not like symbolically, but for real, like a huge storm. pouring rain outside so we figured it was time to do what we do best no not talk about gear but watch some YouTube of some of our homies oh, what we do for photography that's how much I've shot that's how much Caleb shot which is a lot more but you can't really tell in this video 
thoughts? <laughs> Maybe slow down? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Trying to make up for some lost time, we loaded up some 800T for night photography. What you loading? What do you think I'm loading? It's night photography. Send still 50D. <laughs> D for it. Damn, that's gonna be a long exposure. <laughs> <laughs> enthused about tonight. I'm gonna do some shots. <laughs> shots on film. After getting out there, we kind of just realized that we didn't have the mental fortitude to keep going. After three and a half days of nonstop shooting, it was just kind of, it'd be nice to take a break. That, and we didn't want to deal with Albuquerque's strong crackhead energy. So we called it a night early and got a meat mountain sandwich from Arby's. Yes, they exist. Oh my God. <laughs> really? It's actually not bad, but dude, it's gonna give me heart disease in like 40 seconds. I'm gonna have like heart palpitations tonight while I'm sleeping. <laughs> You're gonna wake up sweating meat. After blacking out from the meat mountain and nearly sleep shitting myself, we headed out to Arizona in search of some iced tea. Was Ektar the right choice for this scene? You be the judge. No, Ektar was not the right choice. Best friends just doing drugs. I mean, taking pictures. You have drugs? No, I'm not feeling this one. Cruising along, we pulled up to the Desert Sun Motel, which frankly had seen better days. Being naive and overly confident, I shot Ektar 100 in my Leica M6, but I also snapped a few frames in my Mamiya 7. All that I can say about all this is maybe don't shoot Ektar 100 in 35mm in the middle of the day. You won't like it, and whatever peers you have will lose respect for you, at least in my experience. Can you actually pass me my Leica? Okay, daddy. <laughs> We're stupid. Down the road a bit, we came upon a... I don't know what this thing was. Nonetheless, I shot T-Max in the Mamiya 7 with the same old Promist and yellow filter.
This shot is literally the climax of a diffusion orgasm. This is the most that I've ever seen a one quarter pro mist spike. As we drove along looking for places that were left behind, we stumbled upon this gem, a Taco Bell gas station cantina. I accidentally took a color photo with the yellow filter and Pro Mist still on my camera from the previous roll. The result is what I would expect one of those Lomo liquid filled cameras to look like if it were filled with piss. Similar to the gas station the day before, wondering about who the last person was who visited it, I started to wonder who was the last person to blow up the Taco Bell bathroom. Hoping to change things up a little bit from decrepit buildings, we visited Petrified Forest National Park. I loaded up some Ektar 100 in my Leica M6, hoping to pull a little bit of extra saturation from the landscape. The light wasn't great, but the park was closing in 45 minutes, so what could we do? Some of these shots actually had a really cool lens flare that made it look like Caleb was being beamed up. After singing Life is a Highway for the 300th time, we figured it was time to stop at Two Guns, Arizona. Much to our own disappointment, there were no guns, but instead some foundations of old stone buildings. According to the people that were there when we rolled up, this place used to be a zoo. I loaded up the Yashica with some T-Max 400 as well as the Mamiya 7. The sun was starting to go down, so there was no time to f around.
In the hotel in Flagstaff, Caleb and I were bored, so we decided to check out some porn. Camera porn. The next day was pretty eventful. We went to a local photography printing store and got a quick tour, which was super nice of them. I picked up an expired roll of Portra 400 VC for $5. I know I've made that joke in the past, but for real this time. And for real every other time. We moved on and I shot some Cinestill 50D in my Leica M6 as we did a hike in Sedona, Arizona. If that sounds familiar, you've probably already seen the video about it. And if you haven't, how did you miss it? We almost die of dehydration in that one. You won't want to skip it. Here are some of my favorites from the hike. Anyway, after hiking in a heat wave, it was time to gurgle down some f***ing Dairy Queen. That night, we decided to head out and shoot some locations that we had scouted around Flagstaff earlier in the day. Cinestill 800T in the Mamiya 7 was the only logical choice. Get the f away from my Mamiya. Yeah. Yo, this scared the f out of me. You know what, man? It's a good frame. It's a, it's a really good frame. You mean it? This shot is obviously the best one because I'm a huge Vanilla Ice fan. All right, so we just got back from shooting some night photography in downtown uh, Flagstaff, and um, you've probably seen the results by now. We haven't. Um, shot mostly Cinestill 800T <laughs> with the... I have to take shit. Okay, you can go do that. You don't, you don't need me to acknowledge you doing that. The next day, we continued our journey west in search of beautiful photography, or whatever we could find, I guess. We'll see you again, flag. We're cool now, because we know that. We know yeah. what flag means. Yeah, because we, we've been there. We're basically locals.
We eventually wound up in Truxton and shot some more long abandoned facades. T-Max 400 and the Mamiya 7 was the only logical choice for me here because there was a lot of cloud cover. I don't know if I'm really into the yellow filter look. I think when it works best is against blue skies, but when it doesn't work for a shot, I think it just kind of makes the midtones look a little gray and blobby. I don't know a better way to describe it, so you're just gonna have to live with that. I really like this shot. My boy Tiffin came through in the clutch, thinking of naming my firstborn Tiffin as a tribute. We stopped in Kingman, Arizona, and the lighting was pretty much non-existent, just like our will to keep shooting. I don't know how else to say it. After like six days of non-stop shooting, we were kind of just starting to feel a little burnt out and needed a small break, but that didn't really stop me from firing away anyway, hoping for the best. The Yashica had T-Max 400 and the Leica had Portra 400. Later on, hoping to regain some steam out west, we visited Santa Claus Lane, which was frankly a bit of a disappointment because it seems old St. Nick has let his place become a bit of a dump. I'm not sure that we're going to get a Christmas this year, guys. Ready to party? Let's go. We also finally dipped our butt cheeks back into California for a split second to shoot some nice lighting in a small town. Not into it. Back in Arizona, we eventually arrived at a casino to spend the night. We're not really big gamblers. The only thing we gamble with is if enough light hits our silver halides in time. Anyway, it was our last night of the trip, so we hit the bottle. Dude, I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> and just like how alcohol Cheers. disables other things, it also disabled our interest in shooting night photography that night. Perhaps the only good thing to come out of Arizona and that casino was that Caleb and I finally settled our beef. Uh, so we were shooting today and um, it kind of started getting me thinking about film formats like 120 and 35 millimeter and I kind of started to think fuck APS film are we homies now oh my god did that just happen dude good morning the next day was our last and my spirits were high this is our last day yeah it is finally 
Thanks, Jason. We stopped at a random town out in the California desert, and I shot some T-Max in the Mamiya 7. But more importantly, I made a pretty big discovery. Shooting T-Max in the Yashica T4 with the flash on is actually kind of fuego. I'll definitely have to explore this look further. We came to the conclusion that the best way to end a Route 66 road trip would be to drive our car straight into the Pacific Ocean and die. But passing on that, we decided that shooting the Roy's Route 66 sign would be the perfect way to cap it all out. I really dig these shots. Even if the lighting's not great, I think that the sentimental value is more than enough. As we concluded our trip, I started to draw comparisons between using a largely abandoned medium like film to document places that were also long since abandoned. It was the perfect metaphor. We eventually made it back to LA and returned the rental car. Do we have anything to say to our, our lovely rental car? You served us well. We abused you and we used you, but you always remain faithful. And in our hearts. Or something like that. Cool, okay. <laughs> Let's exit. <laughs> I didn't realize. It was good to finally reunite with the most beautiful thing in my life. And Monica. Speaking of beautiful things, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Are you tired of not having a convenient way to store and share your work online? Well then look no further. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that features an amazingly simple user interface. The UI, mixed with hundreds of template options, really makes your ability to customize your website a walk in the park. If you're interested in opening an online shop to sell prints or zines, Squarespace also offers the entire workflow to put your plans together, from listings to payment options. Plus, Squarespace offers around-the-clock, 24-7 customer support if you do hit a snag. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase.
In the end, I think that these types of videos are my favorite to make, the sort of travel photography style videos. Of course, in my experience, it's not often about the journey so much as it is who you travel with, and Caleb was one of the worst possible I could think of. Obviously, I'm kidding. We had a great time. Once we agreed, APS film is shit. I could see this channel's output moving into less uploads, but more longer form content like this that is a bit more out and about slice of photography life. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but if you're down for it, let me know. I think I produced some quality photos on this road trip. I mean, after 55 rolls of film, there better be at least one that's acceptable. And frankly, I'm excited for the next one. Caleb, I know you're watching. Let's do it again. Uh, except for the abandoned high school part.